For the budget ballers that want to build a pure price to performance gaming PC, these are the two best $100 graphics cards. Now sure, you could make an argument to simply not buy a $100 graphics card and recommend saving up a bit more money. How long have I been telling you to save your money? But in reality, these two cards are all of a lot of gamers really need or can afford. I mean, we're talking about 67 FPS in Starfield, 77 FPS in Cyberpunk, and even a nice 69 FPS in Helldivers 2. <laughs> all in 1080p. $100 graphics cards can definitely give you a solid gameplay experience if you choose the right ones, and especially if you know a little trick to extract even more performance out of them. Today, we'll be comparing and benchmarking these two models, talk about the $100 GPU market just in general, we'll show you a little trick with one of these cards to unlock hidden performance, and all of that comes after a quick word from today's sponsor. Combo Cleaner, which is an antivirus software that works for every device to include Android, Mac, and especially your gaming PC with Windows. Look, I used to work cybersecurity before this YouTube job, and the fact will always remain the weakest cybersecurity point in any type of infrastructure or system is always the user. I'm sure some of you think you're a cybersecurity expert, but malicious software, viruses, and adware can get into your devices in an unlimited amount of ways. We used to send email phishing attempts to our employees at my last job, and every single time we did that, at least like 30% of the people would fall for it. You can easily just protect yourself though and your data with one software download like Combo Cleaner, which will give you more protection than just the tools baked into your operating system. Combo Cleaner also comes with other useful modules like the duplicate file finder and big files finder so you can clear up some storage space, a privacy scanner, and also an app uninstaller to make sure you're not leaving traces of software buried in the hidden folders. Combo Cleaner is actually hooking you all up with a huge 80% discount if you use my code and link which are down in the description. And big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. All right, so Starting with the cards and what's available at $100, honestly, there's a lot of options and I wish we could have covered more in this video. Older generations from both Nvidia and AMD are still running perfectly fine like the GTX 1070 and RX 580 8GB, but there are two cards that shine above the rest. Representing Nvidia, we have the GTX 1660 Super and representing AMD is the RX 5700 non-XT. Now, as the typical disclaimer, if you go on eBay right this very second and search for these exact models, it's not like like you're gonna find like 300 different models all under $100. This is the internet and the year is 2024, so naturally people are overpricing their listings. Is this a joke? And if you want a good deal, you'll have to put in the effort. The GTX 1660 Super is the easier of the two cards to get below $100, and honestly, with a little bit of patience, it won't be that difficult. If you're consistently keeping tabs on eBay, Jawa, and Mercari, chances are high that you'll find one within a few days. The RX 5700, on the other hand, is definitely towards the $120. $20 mark, and I wouldn't really call it a $100 graphics card, it's just the performance is so good that I had to include it in this video. If you've been following ZTT, then you'll already know that I'm a huge fan of its bigger brother, the RX 5700 XT, and that card used to be at the $120 mark pretty consistently, but over time the price has gone up. More and more people are watching YouTube videos and discovering that the meta used graphics card is the 5700 XT, so unfortunately the increased pricing of that is kind of taking itself out of the meta conversation these days. Going in here to mid-2024, yes, it's April already, I would make an argument that the 5700 non-XT is becoming the new budget GPU meta. Not only can this GPU comfortably play literally any game in 1080p with 60 FPS, but it's also got some hidden performance that a lot of people forgot about. Back in the day a few years ago, it was a pretty common thing to buy a 5700 and reflash the BIOS to unlock close to XT level of performance. I mean, even at stock settings, the 5700 XT is roughly about 10% better than than the non-XT model, so a BIOS update can get you pretty close to that. This video is definitely not a tutorial on how to do that, so if you're interested in that process, I would find some step-by-step -step tutorials, but for our testing today, I am gonna show you the numbers both before and after the custom BIOS was loaded. But even if that kind of thing doesn't interest you, the stock settings of the 5700 non-XT are really, really good for a $120 GPU. Before we jump into those numbers, let's take a quick look at some other factors that you need to consider when hunting for a $100 graphics card. First, we'll cover for VRAM because that's only becoming more and more important these days, and the 1660 Super comes with 6 gigabytes of GDDR6, while the 5700 comes with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. These cards launched 5 years ago in 2019, and even back then, just like it is today, you'll usually get more 
or VRAM for your dollar going with AMD. On the flip side, power supply requirements usually favor Nvidia, and that is definitely the case with this comparison. The 1660 Super's recommended minimum power supply is just a 450 watt unit, while the 5700 recommends 600 watts. Now, we all know you can dip a little bit below that with a solid unit, as these are conservative warnings to keep the customer safe, but needless to say, the 1660 Super is definitely more power efficient. The specific model of the 1660 Super we're testing with today requires a single 8-pin power connector, while our 5700 requires both an 8-pin and 6-pin connector. And speaking of these specific models, this actually reminds me of the ultimate troll event that Nvidia did a few years ago. If you look closely, or honestly even from a distance, I think it's safe to say that both these cards look very similar. They're both from MSI, have an extremely similar fan shroud, and the back plates look nearly identical. A few years ago though, Nvidia made a rule for their AIB partners that the Nvidia cards couldn't be the same model name as their AMD counterparts. Previously, an MSI Ventus, for example, could be an MSI Ventus for both an Nvidia model and an AMD model, but now that's no longer the case. Our 1660 Super here is indeed the MSI Ventus, but our almost exact same RX 5700 is an MSI Mech. None of that information is particularly relevant to our $100 GPU conversation, but I think it's important to remember the steps it took for us to get to this current GPU situation that we're in right now. The other important thing to look at is our testing rate, because we made sure that there would definitely be no GPU bottlenecking for this benchmarking run. Our CPU here is an Intel i5-12600KF, and we also have 32 gigs of DDR5 clocked at 6000 megahertz. Not exactly a realistic combination that you'd be pairing with a $100 GPU, but at least we know we'll get to see the full performance capability out of these cards. As a reminder, you'll likely be pairing these GPUs with a budget CPU such as the Ryzen 5 3600, so for more CPU-bound titles like Counter-Strike and Arc Survival Evolved, expect lower FPS numbers than what we're about to show you. Now, one addition we did make to our testing rig was an AIO, and this here is the brand new Deepcool Mystique 360. We all know how everyone is fancying an LCD screen on their AIO these days, myself included, of course, so I love to see more value-driven brands like Deepcool take a shot at it. Not only will this AIO keep somewhat hot CPUs like our 12600KF nice and chilly, but this LCD screen layout is fantastic with a lot of customization. It's actually great for our testing rig because here I can easily see what these temperatures and utilization numbers are, but it's also great for us stat nerds that just want to see as many numbers as possible. You can customize the screen to pretty much show whatever you want, and I'll have a link to this AIO along with everything else we're talking about today down in the description. All right, and just one final reminder before we get into these numbers is I don't want you to consider these two cards as a competition because this is definitely not an apples to apples comparison. The GTX 1660 Super can be found for right around $100 or slightly under that pretty easily with some patience, and the 5700 is indeed around the $120 range. We absolutely should be getting better performance out of the 5700, and we'll save the unlocked custom BIOS benchmarks until after we complete them at stock settings. So starting with 3 Mark's Time Spy, here our 1660 Super got a score of 6,628, while the 5700 got 9,012. Keep in mind, our score is shot up significantly because of the 12th gen Intel i5, but I just wanted to illustrate the difference of these two cards. Here we have Cyberpunk 2077, and we could actually crank up the settings to 1080p high for this one, and the 1660 Super got an average FPS of 52, while the 5700 got 66. Here's the brand new Helldivers 2, pretty much the only game I'm playing right now personally, and here we got 52 FPS again with the 1660 Super in 1080p high settings, and the 5700 got right on the money at 60 FPS. Next up we have Starfield, which is indeed running way better on budget hardware after the latest update, and with 1080p in low settings and a little boost from FSR, our 1660 Super scored 42, which is still playable, but the 5700 got a definitely playable 59 FPS. Here's the rest of the games we tested, and as you can see, these are all pretty impressive results, including for the 1660 Super. As a value driven gamer, obviously the RX 5700 is looking very spicy with this data, but honestly I wouldn't have a problem with somebody targeting the 1660 Super if they did want a cheaper card or if they just prefer Nvidia. But now, let's see the results of the custom BIOS loaded on the 5700 because it's been a long time since I think anybody has really made a video on this and the results are honestly very crazy. Again, for the few of you that probably fast forwarded through this video just to see the benchmarks, please know that you should only load a custom firmware on a graphics card if you know what you're doing. You do have the potential to not only brick your GPU, but it could also be a fire hazard if things go wrong. Please find a step-by-step -step tutorial on YouTube if you want to pursue this. I'm simply just showing you the result of what happens as a conclusion. And honestly, before we show the benchmarking data, we ran a Cinebench 10 minutes GPU stress test, and before the custom BIOS, R5700 only peaked up to 77 
97 degrees, but with the new BIOS, it peaked at 92 degrees. We are definitely sucking out all the possible performance of this GPU, but I do have a feeling with a little bit of potential undervolting or tweaking, we could have gotten slightly better temperatures. We didn't have the time for all that though. So starting with 3 Mark's Time Spy, which is the most consistent benchmark that we can run, here you can see that we got a solid 7.9% increase out of our 5700 with the custom BIOS. For reference, this is a massive 46.7% improvement over the 1660 Super. For Helldivers 2, we got an incredible 15% boost over the stock firmware, Cyberpunk got a 16.7% uplift, and even Starfield got a 13.6% boost. Here's the Notion database screenshot of all the benchmarks that we ran for this project, and this right column here indicates how much of an average FPS increase we got with the custom BIOS over the stock settings of the 5700. Other than Rust, which just completely flatlined for whatever reason, every game got anywhere between 5 to a 17% lift, which is pretty crazy considering this is literally free FPS. Well, we are paying in heat and power consumption, but other than that, totally free. Honestly, you just can't go wrong with either of these two graphics cards if you're shopping around the $100 market, but clearly my recommendation would be the 5700, and bonus points if you think you're capable of loading a custom BIOS on there. If you pair either of these GPUs though up with a price to performance monster CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600 or even the 5500, you could build yourself a very powerful 1080p system for 350 to 400 bucks. But if you do have a little bit more money to spend on your GPU, maybe around the $150 mark, then please definitely check out the video that's on the screen now.